Hi, Moonies. Welcome to the Sailor Moon Fan Club podcast. I'm your host, Victoria L. Johnson, and I'm here with Stephanie Shea. She's, of course, the voice of Usagi, aka Sailor Moon, aka Princess Serenity, in the Viz Media redub of Sailor Moon and in the reboot Sailor Moon Crystal. She's also played Hinata in Naruto, Orihime in Bleach, Yurika in Yurika 7, Mitsuha in Your Name, Casey Turnbuckle in Can Busters, basically all of your favorite characters, and I'm super excited to have her here. Hey, Stephanie, how are you? Hi. <laughs> so first question I ask everyone is just what's your first memory of watching Sailor Moon? Oh, you know what? I didn't actually watch it growing up because mm-hmm. um, I'm probably like the oldest one in the entire cast. Everyone is um, slightly younger than me. So I when it was airing in the United States, I was like, I feel like I was like. in like graduating high school or starting college. So mm-hmm. it felt like at the time a little bit too young for me, which like now having seen the show, that isn't the case. But like, you know, it just see like, I don't know, that was the impression that I have of what the show was at the time. So I never really, um, I never really watched it um, until I started working on it. Um, you said you didn't see it um, until you started working on it. Yeah. Oh. Um. What was your first impression? Um, I thought it was pretty silly and fun. I didn't realize how funny it was. Um, mm-hmm. I actually thought it was genuinely really, really funny. Um, and um, I also didn't realize how progressive it was in terms of gender identity. And even on the surface, it, it's, it doesn't seem very feminist, but, and there are definitely some issues with, you know, certain plot lines, like, like with um her friends always calling him soggy fat. Um, right. Yeah. But in a way, the idea of like femininity in it, or even like what it meant to be a girl, it's like hyper girly that I feel like it almost makes fun of what society says it means to be a girl. Do you know what I mean? Like, I can't imagine that, like, that at the time, the audiences then were oblivious to the fact that it was ridiculous that all her friends kept calling Usagi fat. Do you know what I mean? But she's not Mm -hmm. drawn fat. Like, nobody, and no audience in their right mind would actually think that Usagi's fat. So, in a way, it felt like they were poking fun of, like, this, how image-obsessed and how, like, weight-obsessed we can be especially at that age. Right. Yeah, I could definitely see that because around that time, you're like 14, 15, 16, like you usually think you're like, you. most people aren't comfortable with their bodies, I would say. And so I could definitely see them like, let's talk about this, like things that young girls go through, but also kind of poke fun. Clearly, she is not <laughs> that at all. Yeah, and I mean, I there's this even- whole episode where like, the prize, like the villains come and they try to trick everybody and that the prize is to win a ready, wedding reception and you have to make yeah. your own wedding dress, right? And none of these girls, I mean, first of all, they're like 16, but second of all, none of these girls even have boyfriends, but yet they become so obsessed and competitive in like wanting to win this because they want the perfect wedding reception. And in that essence, I feel like it's also poking fun of this idea of like, we're told we just we just need to get married, you know, like the perfect wedding. Like, so the fact that like you forget like what the purpose of a marriage is or what the purpose of a wedding is, like, what is it celebrating? You know, like you don't even actually have the thing that makes it uh, uh, a wedding then, but you're obsessed with just the thing itself, you know? Yeah. I think the same thing can kind of be said too about how, like the more she like transforms, like the more girlier she gets, like the more powerful she gets. It's like, oh, like I leveled up and now there's like butterflies and like more hearts and like my I get more frills. And that's always been really interesting to me, too. Like the more powerful she gets, the more girlier she gets, basically. Totally. Um, did you have this might be a, we might be biased, but did you have a, a Sailor Scout or a Senshi that you stood out to you? Probably Ami, just because I was always like really studious and Mm. she's really studious, you know, 
I was very well behaved and studious. So that's kind of like what I relate to. That makes sense. Did you, so would you say like you identified more with her? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Was there a scout that like you wanted to be like? Like I also, like oftentimes I'll say like I identify a lot with Usagi, but like I would like to be like Neptune or Pluto because they seem like they have their lives together. (laughs) Well, I mean, you're also thinking like, (laughs) like I didn't watch the show when I was younger. So I didn't see them as like, what, like, you know what I mean? I didn't Mm -hmm. see, I, when I, by the time I was exposed to the show, I wasn't really, um, uh, it wasn't presented in a way like, oh my gosh, I would like to be this person. And like, you know, I'm quite old now. So going back to be like, ooh, I want to be like a 16 year old Mm -hmm. is a little bit. (laughs) That's fair. Yeah. Um, and I, I actually think that they all have a lot of really good qualities. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, it's, it's hard to say. And then some of them are clearly teenagers and other of them are more are older. So mm-hmm. I, I don't, but I never kind of like thought of it in that way. There was no aspiration just because that moment in my life kind of passed, you know? Right. Yeah. That makes sense. I could see that. Um, do you have any other anime you're into? Um, so, I mean, I don't, now that I like work in anime, I don't get to watch it as much. I did start out as a fan. Mm -hmm. Um, and, but now I don't really watch it for pleasure. I watch it for work, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I, I love, um, I loved your name. I love that movie. It's probably still one of my favorite movies, Mm -hmm. like of all time. Um, you know, regardless if I had if I even if I hadn't have gotten the chance to work on it, it would be one of my favorite movies. I'm a big fan of um uh Yuasa. Like he did um he did uh uh he did uh Devil Man Cry Baby for Netflix, but he also did um a movie called Lou Over the Wall, which I think you can also watch on Netflix. Hmm. And um he did he did a movie called Night is Short, Walk On Girl, um, which is amazing. And, um, and then I just directed one other one of his films called Ride Your Wave, which, um, is probably one of my favorite movies now. It's, uh, yeah, it's a very moving movie. Um, but I think when I was watching it, I was very, I was into the, some of the shows. I loved Cowboy Bebop. Mm-hmm. I loved, um, I loved Evangelion. I loved Escaflone. I loved Kodomo no Mocha. Um, what other shows was I like really into? Um, I'm trying to think, but I also it was like way back when. Um, oh, you know, I really loved Fushigi Yugi, but like that has very it is does not have high rewatch value. Oh. Like the first time you watch it, it's really good, and then the second and any other time you watch it after that, it's um, you just I don't know. You just find Miyaka annoying. <laughs> I have But the first time you were like totally into the love story. And the second time you're like, oh, <laughs> like she's annoying. And like her and the and the villain, her best friend was like, I mean, she was raped. Like it was like heavy stuff. Like, of course, she right. did what she did. You know what I mean? Anyway. um, Yeah. So, yeah, those are probably some of the, the ones that stick out in my mind of like what I was like really into. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, your name is definitely one of my favorite um, movies of the past few years. Um, and I haven't rewatched Fushigi Yugi, so now I'm afraid to, but <laughs> now I have to see what you're talking Maybe about. Maybe it's been so long mm-hmm. that it'll be like the first time again. Right. That's true. That might, that's possible. I'm going to hope. But did you like it? Like you liked it, right? I remember liking you watched it. it. I think, I remember liking it. I mean, it's like soap opera. It's so soapy. It's so melodramatic. Mm-hmm. But like, I think that's the thing. Like, if you already know what's coming, like, after you watch it the first time, you watch it again, you're like, whoa, this is, like, so melodramatic. Right. You know, it gets a little, I don't know. Or maybe I just, like, between the first time watching it and the second time watching it, I just, like, matured so much. <laughs> it just, like, wasn't into it anymore. I don't know. I mean, that did happen to me. I mean, not this is an anime at all, but with Full House, like, I cannot go back and watch Full House anymore. Oh, yeah. That show is so cheesy. Are you kidding me? 
<laughs> but when you were a kid, you loved it and you thought the right. twins were adorable. And then as an adult, you watch it, and you're like, the twins were not good actors. <laughs> no. like, They're yeah. actually quite annoying. <laughs> yeah. I'm done. Yeah, no, I realized like in every episode, they play like that music where it's like, this is the message time. And I'm like, every episode you have like a message like, but yeah, but it was funny. So I guess first things first, you know, we talked about a lot of the characters you've portrayed. How did you get into voice acting in the first place? I actually did get into voice acting through um, anime because um, I was really into anime and um, I I would watch it all subtitled because I thought that the dubs were not good. Mm -hmm. And um, I... Uh, I, at the time, I think I had also like, you know, wanted to act and um, was a little bit um, like, and I wasn't really sure if, if I was good enough, but, um, but because they felt like dubs were like, not good at all. I was like, that should be an easy way to get in. <laughs> like, that's how I pursued voiceover um and specifically anime and that's why i got my foot in the door in terms of anime and then just from there like i actually started getting work and then just learning about the craft and getting more into it and so it kind of all fell into place afterwards that's funny so was it like people aren't doing that great of a job at this i can do just as good or better was that kind of the feeling um yeah yeah that was the feeling and now now I think back about it and it's, and it's kind of a little bit, I think, unfair because um, it's a it's a lot harder work than it is than you would think it you would. It's actually like kind of the joke among actors is that dubbing work is probably the hardest, the hardest um, type of acting you can do. And yet you get paid the least because with acting, it's all about creativity and freedom and you don't really get that, you know, vocally, you're matching another person's voice. So you're trying, you're, you're not, you don't even have creativity to do the voice that you want. And then line by line, you can't make the emotional choices that you want to. It's already pre, you know, somebody else already made the performance and then you have to match that, right? So sometimes you might be in a moment, you're like, oh, I, I feel like I would want as an actor to choose to do it this way, but you really can't because that's not what was done in the Japanese first, right? So there's that. And then then on top of that, you have to match the timing and you have to match the, you know, if there's a pause in the middle of it, if the mouth is animated really, really big, you need to at least project in a way or emote in a way that it matches that really big mouth. And all the while sound like it's very natural, you know, and and not sound like it's such a, like a million different technical things in your brain. So it's super difficult, but it's not like we get paid the least. Yeah. I never thought of it like that. That would be super difficult. Like you just said, like to be that precise and to have to continuously do it for, you know, however many episodes an anime is. Is. Yeah, it's like very, very precise, but then try not to sound precise at all. Right. Yeah. Like you have to get it like right on time, but also you need to sound natural. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, so what would you say with that in mind? What would you say is the funnest character you've got to play and the hardest character? Um, I think the most difficult characters are always the vocally stressful characters. I think that like there was um, when I did Zatch Bell, the character of Penny like she has a demon side of her and that voice is pretty rough to do. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, um, uh, most fun. I always like, I, I somehow get caught cast a lot and like dual type personality characters. Um, and those are really, really fun to play. I think, you know, like, um, um, in, um, there was a show called Hare and Goo. Mm -hmm. And there's like friendly goo and unfriendly goo. Um, and that was super fun. And um, there was a show called Lucky Star. And at the end, there was a bit called Lucky Channel. And I, I voiced a, a character named Akira Kogami. And she had like a really like dry, like whatever, but then was like really happy and fun. And so that was also 
really kind of fun whenever I get to like switch back and forth. And Zatch Bell, Penny was the same way. She had like a very peppy and then she was like a demon. So um, anything that involves kind of that duality has been, I has been just super fun for me. Yeah, that's, that would be fun. Um, anybody say, I guess that's like fun and hard at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Cause I can see how it would be fun. Cause you're like switching up and get to like play multiple kind of like draw from different personalities sort of, or different yeah. emotions, but at the same time you have to like do that at the same time. And that can be hard. Um, yeah. do you have any characters that you would love to voice? Well, not so much like any characters because like nowadays it's so different because like, you know, back when we started, um, we used to, we used to, um, like it used to take a long time for, uh, for the, uh, the, um, anime to come to the United States and to be dubbed. Mm -hmm. So it'd be easier to be like, oh, I want to voice this person or this person and this person. But nowadays it comes so fast. So there isn't really like a, we don't really get that much of a heads up or like, you know, people don't, people aren't like watching so much stuff ahead of time so that we're like, oh yes, I would love to voice this and voice that. Um, so I, nothing really pops into my mind. Um, although I still really, really would love to be a voice on a, some, some in the star Wars universe. So, Oh, that would, yeah, that would be awesome. Who would you, do you have a preference for a character or would it, would you like a new character? Well, I mean, I don't want to take someone's job, so <laughs> like it would probably be a new character. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Oh, that would be cool. I hope that gets to happen. So that would be awesome. Um, and then one of the characters, obviously, outside of Usagi, that I love that you played was Casey Turnbuckle. Um, oh, yeah. Her voice is so amazing. <laughs> one of the funniest characters. And um, and then I realized you also played um, 1337 slash Lee. Yeah, the, the bot that was kind of like breaking down in Cannon Busters that was trying to convince Casey. That was Casey. the saddest episode ever. Yeah, I think that might have been one of the best episodes of the series. So it's so good. It's so like it's so profound. Hmm. It's so much better than just an anime. That but that's one of those episodes where you're like, whoa. And I this woman, um, Anne. Oh, what's Anne's last name? Um, she wrote it. It's so funny. I I met her randomly at a game developers conference. And then, then I found out later that she had written episodes of, um, of, uh, Cannon Busters. Of Cannon Busters. Mm -hmm. And then I found out that that was her episode. Is it Ann like, Tool? Wow. Yeah. yeah. Ann Tool, exactly. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That was such a great, how did you, um, get into that role? I auditioned for it, um, along with a lot of other people. Um, I did get a leg up because, you know, I, 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 I know I'm familiar. I was familiar with the show because I helped, I was helped, uh, I helped cast it and I helped produce it. So I knew the show and I also helped cast and produce, um, the pilot. So, um, I already, I already were familiar with the character a little bit more so than probably an actor coming in who didn't know as much about the character. Right. I had a little bit of the behind the scenes, um, leg up in terms of that. How did you get your mindset together for that episode to kind of play the same thing? Like you mentioned before, that duality of two characters who are kind of opposites. Well, I think Casey, the main thing about Casey is that, um, and I have to be careful because Casey, Casey intentionally, because I am female, I think of Casey as female, but Casey is neither male or female. And Casey, the name itself is also kind of, could be either gender, you know, and Casey's a robot. So uh, Casey's adorable regardless. Um, but I think the thing about Casey is their, um, their curiosity and their um, uh, wanting to learn, you know, and th they're also giving others the benefit of the doubt. Um, there is something that like, that kind of drives a lot of the choices that we made with Casey. Um, that there's this kind of like, it's not just cutesy, cutesy, cutesy. It's more about like um, the level of like, whoa, excitement 
that um, that they have in approaching so many things. Um, and it's a similar approach. To, like I've played a lot of like young, innocent characters that some people may think appear dumb. Um, or for example, Yui and Kaon. Mm -hmm. um, she's adorable, but she kind of can appear like not so smart. Um, and somebody asked me before, like, how do you, why, how is it that you sound so cute or how is it that you, you can sound like, like that? And I think that, um, the main thing is like dumb characters are not like, I don't try to sound dumb because like dumb characters, dumb people are not, you know, thinking about sounding dumb or, you know, or not you know, not being bright instead. Um, I think the reason why like someone like Eric, like Yui is so adorable is because there's this sheer, like the innocence is about like the excitement of everything new. Right. Yeah. So like there is, instead of just like a, it's it, instead of like a wow, like, wow, it's very, it's so like, Oh, whoa, like it's very, everything is ooh, like, like, approach to everything even the most simple things in life there is just element of joy and and um surprise by everything things that other people would like take for granted like those types of characters find completely delightful yeah yeah i think that's the right word i definitely found casey very delightful <laughs> it's a very fun character and i i love um the prince, not the the um Sam as well. Oh yeah. yeah, she was great. Um, yeah, so that's cool. I didn't know you were involved at such a beginning because I remember, I remember hearing about it and covering it when um it was on Kickstarter, and so like hearing seeing it come out was like a nice full circle moment for me too. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I also saw that you are going to be in the new newly announced series, Magical Girl Friendship Squad. Um, can you say anything about it? It sounds amazing so far, I'll say. I, I'm not in it much, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> I'm just in there a little bit. Um, but the show is, at least the scripts that I read were really funny um, uh, and really great. That's pretty much all I can say about it. Yeah. Like, people should definitely uh, watch it. It's um, It made me laugh and I had a good time working on it. Awesome. Well, hey, that's all I need to know. I'm already going to check it out, but. It's always nice to hear some extra good news about it. <laughs> and so last question is just like Sailor Moon at the end of every episode had the Sailor Moon says phrase in the original dub. Um, what would be your phrase? Like Stephanie says. What was the kind what 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 did the original dub do? Because I never really watched it. Right. So there would always be like a kind of a, a sum up of like the the meaning of the episode like you know like you mentioned before with the girls like you know if there were um like feeling subconscious it's like you know sometimes you may feel subconscious but you know that's okay and you know you shouldn't you know take it out on yourself and you know just kind of like those feel good kind of summations it's like a, at the end of gi joe when they're like the more you know or something that's knowing true. is half the battle or something whatever <laughs> they yeah. say um i did not i did not see those things um uh i i did see though growing up it's like name that pokemon and like, i remember like that um huh interesting what would be so this would have to be like for everything well not like for our episode but just like in general like what phrase in life would you give that's so hard. It's so it's so general. It is. Um, it could be anything. I can give you some examples of others. Yeah, like what other people have said. Yeah. Okay. So, Tell me what my peers have said. Okay, so we've had punch fear in the face. Wait, who said that? <laughs> um, Jackie. She is um, the creator of a, a manga series called Adorned by Chi. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, which is also a magical girl series. Um. Don't give up. That is the key from um, Brandon. He's a, or I love Brandon is his name on Spotify. He's a musician. Um, 
let's see, Screw the Haters, Secure the Bag <laughs> from um, L.L. McKinney. She's a, a author who wrote um, A Blades of Black and a few other books. Um, These are so good. Yeah. Um, Chill Out, Have a Good Time <laughs> from um, GDB. She's an artist who also has a Magic Girls um, comic on Webtoon called Hover Girls. Um, yeah. Okay, this would be my piece of advice. Mm-hmm. I, I came up with one, but it's not nearly as good as all these other people. Okay, go. It would be, don't worry what other people think about you because they're not. They're too busy thinking about themselves. (laughs) I love that. That's so good and so true. (laughs) Yeah, I, I would have to agree with you. I think that is true. I think I struggled with that for a while. And then I'm like, you know what? I am being narcissistic. No one cares what I'm doing or what I'm feeling or whatever. (laughs) Well, I don't think you're being narcissistic, but no one does care. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) They're too too busy being narcissistic. We're all narcissistic. We're all a little bit. Self-conscious. It's normal. I think, therefore, I am. So how can I stop thinking about myself? Right, yeah. (laughs) That's great, though. I love it. (laughs) Thank you for thinking of something great. Um, And then what's next for you, and where can people find you? Oh, uh, okay. So what's next for me? Oh, my God. That you can say. Well, I mean, oh, you know what I did talk about is that um, there's – I think it's coming out in August – There's a movie called Ride Your Wave that I directed and um, the lead voice. uh, By the way, I directed the entire thing remotely. I literally just wrapped on it like a week and a half ago. But like I like all the actors recorded in their homes. Wow. Which is not easy because this is anime, which means they have to match to picture. So we had to like send the photo. We had to like do it over Skype and then get this other software called source connect, like to be able to record their audio through the internet. Like, yeah, it's, and while it worked out, it, it's definitely much, much, it's much more difficult to do than to do it on purpose person. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm sad that I did not get to meet my fellow cast. Um, so that, you know, to, to really bond in that way, but I'd much rather that everybody be safe, but Mm -hmm. yes, we I recorded an entire movie from people's homes. Um, it's called Ride Your Wave, um, and it should be coming out in early August. The Blu-ray um, from G Kids, and it's an amazing movie. Um, mm. Like I fully expect people to cry. Yeah, I bet. I'm looking like, it up now, and it looks amazing. And they're singing in it. Oh, like we dubbed over the songs, which and the song is really really catchy. Oh. And you should be able to. I mean, you'll probably like, you'll probably, you'll, you'll probably, um, get the song stuck in your head by the time (laughs) it's over because it's like, they sing it over and over and over and over and over again. Right. Um, where, well, how was that to direct actually remotely? And was this your, is this going to be your directional debut or have you directed before? Oh, I've directed other stuff before. Okay. I've totally directed other stuff before. Um, um, is it, how was it? it? It was a challenge, but we got through it. Um, and I'm just really grateful to the actors who, like, helped out, you know, um, who was willing to put up with, like, you know, because we sometimes we'd, we'd have to do, like, a little internet test or mm-hmm. or something just to, like, make sure that, everything is going smoothly. Um, and you know, we, I did find that the internet got worse towards the end of the day because I assume people just started watching Netflix (laughs) like, or also everybody's working from home. So it's like harder to, yeah. Get it to work. And yeah, to get to, it's harder because everybody's on the internet. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's a great movie and people should go rent it or get it. Yeah. And what's, what's it about? Um, I don't want to give away too much, Okay, but, um, it's, a, I mean, it's about finding yourself 
it's about relationships. Um, it's about facing your fears. It's a lot of different themes going on in there. Well, I love all of those things and I love songs, so I'll definitely watch it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Please do. I will. That's so great. I'm so happy. Um, and then where can people find you on the web? Oh, okay. Uh, my Twitter is just at Stephanie Shea. Mm -hmm. And then my Instagram is the number two and then Shea. Oh, it's very simple. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you again for coming on the show. Yeah. Yeah. It all worked out. Yeah. <laughs> And once again, I'm Victoria, a game is old school. It's old school with the K on Twitter and Instagram. And you can also find the podcast at Mooney's Club on Twitter and Mooney's underscore club on Instagram. And thanks for listening. <laughs>